The year 1916 was college cup year, and across the nation, schools and fans celebrated 100 years of the enjoy pleasure of seeing college football. Nowhere in the nation was it enjoyed more than in the state of Nebraska, where fans watched the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers to the great leadership of America winning its coach, Bob Penny, and his staff put together a great season of eight wins and two losses. An eager and dedicated group of ball players, led by 19 seniors, refused to believe that they could finish no better than fifth in the Big Eight Conference, and immediately set about the task pitching, enthusiasm, and a never-say-die attitude proved to be a formula that would make them... It all started on a sunshiny September 20th at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. An overflow crowd of 67,053 Big Red fans jammed the stands to watch Nebraska play nationally ranked Southern California. Nebraska receives the opening kickoff of the 1969 season as Mike Green takes the ball in at the 10. And the centennial football year is underway. It was late in the second quarter before the Big Reds could score. Here, quarterback Van Bronson hands to Larry Frost on the inside. Frost cuts outside to the sideline, finds daylight, and starts downfield. And finally driven out of bounds at the Southern Cal 3. Three plays later, Van Bronson drove it over from the two. Paul Rogers, the point after kicker. The kick is good, and the score reads USC 14, Nebraska 7. With time running out, U.S. started another drive. On this controversial pass play, from Jones to Orkut. The pass is complete for a 20-yard gain. It kept the drive going, and now with only 17 seconds left in the half, Jones again is looking for receivers. He finds Evans in the end zone for the touchdown. A touchdown that hurt the Husker cause in the opening ball game. The point after is good, and at halftime, Southern California leads 21 to 7. There were more exciting moments for Husker fans in the fourth quarter. Here, Jerry Taggy throws to Dave Mason, who makes a fine catch and a gain of six yards. Then it's Jeff Kinney up the middle for a touchdown. With the point after attempt good, the score reads USC 28, Nebraska 14. Nebraska went on to score another touchdown late in the fourth quarter to move the score closer at 28-21. But the Trojans retaliated with a field goal to put it out of reach. The final score, USC 31, Nebraska 21. Undaunted by an opening game loss, the fans responded the following week and returned to the stadium to watch Nebraska play Texas A&M before a national television audience. Even with a television broadcast, 66,331 fans shouted their favorites to victory. The Nebraska defense was the first to sting the Aggies, as here, Jim Anderson intercepts the Sheffield pass and returns it 18 yards to the A&M three-yard line. On the next play, Jeff Kinney rams the ball up the middle to score. Nebraska added the kick and had the lead seven to nothing. The always strong Nebraska defense made it tough on the Aggies with plays like these. Stegent being dropped for a six-yard loss. And now Sheffield wants to pass. And senior safety man Randy Reeves intercepts in the end zone. Before the first half ended, Nebraska scored again on this series of plays. Jerry Taggy to Jeff Kinney for 13 yards to the Texas 32. And now Taggy follows with another pass. This to senior tight end Jim McFarland for a gain of 19 more. Four plays later, with the ball on the one, Taggy sneaks up the middle for the touchdown. Paul Rogers attempting the point after. The kick is good. Nebraska leads 14 to nothing. It was defense in the second half. Here, Rocky Self, the quarterback, is pulled down from behind 
by Dave Walline and Mike Wynn. Defense again as Dana Stevenson intercepts at the goal line and brings the ball back out to the 39-yard line. The final score, Nebraska 14, Texas A&M nothing. The next weekend found the Cornhuskers in Minneapolis, Minnesota for their first road game of 1969. They weren't alone as 11,000 Nebraska fans traveled to the Twin Cities to watch and cheer their team. Coach Devaney had won four straight against the Gophers, and now he would go for win number five. He was not to be denied. A bit of trickery as halfback Kinney throws to split end Ingles for a touchdown. Rock Rapids, Iowa boy Paul Rogers with the point after. The kick is good, and Nebraska and Minnesota are tied 7-7. In the second quarter, with a score at 7-7, Minnesota struck on a 99-yard pass interception to go ahead 14-7. And Nebraska came back with plays like that by Green for 10. Taggy, finding the air lanes open, decides to throw again and throws a perfect strike to Larry Frost into the end zone for the touchdown, a 38-yard touchdown pass. The kick was good. The score tied 14-14 as the half ended. Nebraska came strong after the intermission. This pass interception by Alan Larson returns to the Minnesota 17. A half dozen plays later, Jeff Kinney drives over the right side. The tie is broken. Paul Rogers to kick. A perfect kick by Rogers, and it's 21 14, Nebraska. After getting the ball back on their own one-yard line, the Huskers capped off a 99-yard drive with this pass play from Taggy to Frost. Frost all alone on the left sideline. Taggy spots him. It's complete. Frost do running, and he's in for the touchdown, a 43-yard pass play. At the end of the quarter, Nebraska 28, Minnesota 14. But the Cornhuskers weren't done yet. Taggy passes to McFarland, a 25-yard gain. And then from the one-yard line, Kinney slams over left guard for the score. And now it's Nebraska 35, Minnesota 14. To wrap it up with 3.15 left to play, Van Bronson now at quarterback throws to Rogers, and they turn it into a 15-yard gain. Four plays later... Jeff Hughes, a sophomore from Burlington, Vermont, turns in a sparkling 24-yard run to cap off the scoring for the afternoon. A big day offensively for the Nebraska Cornhuskers as they defeat the University of Minnesota 42-14, the largest winning margin for a Cornhusker team against Minnesota since the series between the two schools started. <laughs> On to Missouri the next weekend to play the Missouri Tigers. A tough job faced the Huskers as they opened Big A play on the road against a team that many picked to win the conference title. The day was less than ideal as a light drizzle and a hard halftime rain made conditions less than desirable. Nebraska found themselves trailing 14 to nothing at halftime, but after the intermission, they came back in the third quarter. Taggy hits Kinney on a short, quick opening pass, and Kinney outlegs the Tigers for a 77-yard touchdown run. Nebraska back in the ballgame as Paul Rogers adds the point after, and the score reads, Missouri 14, Nebraska 7. It was a defensive battle as usual between these two teams. Adrian Fiala, the linebacker from Omaha, makes a good tackle on McBride. Now John Staggers loses two more. And quarterback McMillan is dropped for a loss of one. Nebraska still trailing. Mounted an attack with a minute and six seconds left. Brownson throwing to Frost. Complete for 18 yards. Finding the going just a bit easier in the air lane. Brownson follows with this pitch to Jim McFarland for a gain of 18 more. But with only seconds remaining on the clock, Brownson 
finds McFarland again. But the clock runs out, and Missouri has won 17 to 7. Nebraska has lost their first conference football game. After losing the conference opener, Nebraska knew they must win the rest to have a chance at that conference crown. On Saturday, October 18th in Lincoln, the Cornhuskers started a string of wins that would eventually lead them to that objective. The opponent, the Kansas Jayhawks, defending conference champions. This defensive play started Nebraska to their first touchdown. Steve Ettinger back to throw. Randy Reeves makes the interception. And Nebraska now has the football. After moving the ball to the Kansas 38, Paul Rogers kicks a 55-yard record-breaking field goal to put Nebraska on top in the ball game, three to nothing. After adding another 46-yard field goal, Nebraska strikes for its first touchdown. Jerry Taggy back to throw. Finds slot back Larry Frost. Frost gets the good block and heads for daylight. A gain of 37 yards. Then Jeff Kinney bangs up the middle for the touchdown. As they throw now for the two-pointer, complete to Kinney. Nebraska leads 14-0. Kansas scored two more times in the second half to make it 17-14, and the pressure was on. But the Nebraska defense was up to the task. An attempted field goal, and Sherwin Jarman makes the block. Later, it was defense again that gets the ball back. The handoff to Rucker, and he gains one yard. Kansas finding the going tough on the ground against Nebraska. Now Jesse tries. He stops for no gain. And with time running out, Nebraska starts the winning drive. Taggy throws to Kinney. Complete for 15 yards. After a pass interception call and a personal foul on the Jayhawks, Nebraska scores with a minute and 22 seconds remaining. The point after by Rogers is good. And Nebraska wins 21 to 17. A real cliffhanger for Nebraska fans and coaching staff. Still alive in the conference race and tied for the lead with Missouri, Nebraska now entertains the always tough Oklahoma State Cowboys. Historically, this has always been a tough game for Nebraska, and this history held true again on this October 25th afternoon. Defense was the name of the game. Cutworth at quarterback, and he's in trouble as the big end Sherwin Jarman, pursuing from the right, dropped Cutworth for a 16-yard loss. That was just the start of things to come. Cutbirth back to throw, and squeezed by three, another long loss for the Cowboys. Now Nebraska's offense takes over. Jerry Taggy doing a bit of scrambling here, looking for an open man, throws deep, and a sensational catch by Guy Angles advances the ball 47 yards. On the march now and throwing strikes, Taggy hits Jim McFarland. A gain of 10 yards, Nebraska in scoring position, as three plays later, Taggy sneaks in. A tough ball game, and at halftime, Nebraska leads 7 to nothing. Hardly a safe margin for the Cornhusker squad. In the third quarter, Oklahoma State came back with a field goal to cut the margin to 7-3. to three. Then Nebraska gets the ball back, and a real scrambling run by Van Bronson advances it. Van Bronson still at quarterback. Looking for someone to throw to. And deep, it's the little fella Guy Engels. 
A good bit of running now by Engels turns the play into a touchdown for the Cornhuskers. The kick was no good. And Nebraska held a shaky 13-3 lead. Oklahoma State could go no further as the Nebraska defense took the play from them. Here, Sherwin Jarman blocks the cut berth punt, and the race is on. But the ball belongs to Nebraska. The final score, Nebraska 13, Oklahoma State 3. And Nebraska has now won four and lost two with four games to go. The herd of Golden Buffalo from the University of Colorado stampeded into Lincoln the next weekend. The Buffs wanted to bring their live Buffalo mascot, Ralphie. But feeling the Buffs team was tough enough without the help of a live Buffalo, Ralphie stayed home. Colorado took the lead early. Then Nebraska struck back with this 40-yard field goal by kicker Paul Rogers. Right through the uprights, the score, Colorado 7, Nebraska 3. Now with time running out in the first half, Nebraska scored its first touchdown. Bouncing goes back to throw. A fine catch by Larry Frost advances the ball 19 yards. Then it's Dan Schneider, the big fullback, from West Bend, Wisconsin, who shakes off tacklers and scrambles around the left side for a gain of nine. Two plays later, Jeff Kinney sweeping to the right and scores. With the kick good, Nebraska led at halftime, 10 to 7. The crowd being entertained by the Colorado band. Inspired at halftime, Nebraska scored early in the third quarter. This Bratton pass is intercepted by all Big A defensive back Dana Stevenson. Now from the 27-yard line, Brownson with some heads-up quarterback play finds his intended receiver, Dan Schneider. Schneider turns it on down the sideline. And it's another Nebraska touchdown. Rodgers with the kick. It's good. And the score, Nebraska 17, Colorado 7. Defense gave Nebraska the ball again on this fumble recovered by Jim Anderson. In five plays, the ball is advanced to Colorado 15, and Rodgers kicks a 32-yard field goal to end the day's scoring. The final score, Nebraska 20, Colorado 7. The Buffaloes, without Ralphie, go home defeated. It was homecoming in Lincoln the next weekend, and the fourth consecutive Saturday to be playing in Lincoln. The team and fans realized that the win streak would have to be continued to stay in the race. A great crowd of over 67,000 packed Memorial Stadium. Coach Bob Devaney was going after his 100th college win. On the third play of the second quarter, Nebraska struck with a vengeance. Van Bronson finds Jim McFarland all alone down the sideline. McFarland starts downfield and is caught just short of the Iowa State goal line. A gain of 69 yards. Jeff Kinney from the eye back position now. Carries over right tackle for a gain of 10 to the one yard line. On the next play, Bronson sneaks in for the touchdown. The point after kick by Paul Rogers is good. Nebraska leads seven to nothing. Iowa State garnered a field goal, and at halftime, the score read Nebraska 7, Iowa State 3. Not a big lead for Coach Devaney and his staff. Early in the third quarter, Nebraska countered with this play. Jerry Taggy throws to Dan Schneider. It's a gain of 11 yards. After being stopped at the 8-yard line, Paul Rogers kicks a 25-yard field goal. Nebraska now has the lead 10 to 3. 
but the game still isn't out of reach for the coach and his staff. Nebraska added to its total on these plays. Taggy to Kinney, and a gain of 11. Now Taggy throws to co-captain Mike Green. And Green carries it into the end zone, standing up for the touchdown. 17-3, Nebraska leads Iowa State. Then the defense took over and shut the Cyclones out the rest of the day. Over Tisdale, at quarterback, being chased, and the crowd gathers to drop Tisdale for a nine-yard loss. Finding this great sport, the Huskers decide to try again. Tisdale, looking for someone for help if possible, Ken Geddes nails him for a loss of eight. The final score is Devaney wins his 100th game, Nebraska 17, Iowa State 3. The scene was now set for one of the most exciting games in Bob Devaney's career in Nebraska, the Kansas State Wildcats in Manhattan, Kansas. An all-time crowd of 40,000 was treated to as fine a football game as could be seen anywhere. Kansas State led early in the game 7 to nothing, and were moving again when Lynn Dickey was dropped for a loss of 7 by Bob Liggett. Now linebacker Ken Geddes gets into the play as he intercepts the Dickey pass and returns 24 yards. The Huskers were unable to score in the first half, however, and at intermission, Kansas State had a 7 to nothing lead. Nebraska put three points on the scoreboard early. Here, Brownson passes to Schneidt for 18 yards, and the first down. Now Jeff Kinney will get the call. And Kinney responds with five more. Kansas State rallied to force the Huskers into a field goal try. And here, Paul Rogers responds with a perfect boot from 39 yards away. And the score read Kansas State 7, Nebraska 3. But it was defense again to get the ball back for the Cornhuskers. Hickey back to throw, and he'll lose two yards. Now with the ball on the Kansas State 47, Van Bronson will be looking for help as the Huskers would like to get that touchdown. Bronson throws to Schneid. It's a gain of 15 yards. Bronson warming up now will fire another strike, this time to the senior slot back, Larry Frost. Frost turns in a good run. A gain of 16 yards, and Nebraska has a first down at the Kansas State 13 at the end of the third quarter. Kansas State took over on down, stopping the drive, but Nebraska forced them to punt. Now first and 10 at the Kansas State 48, as Schneidt breaks a long gainer that carries the ball all the way to the Kansas State 14. A gain of 34 yards. The combination of Brownson and Schneid team up again. And the ball is advanced to the Kansas State three. Two plays later, Brownson sneaks in. Nebraska has gone ahead in the ball game. The all-important point after touchdown attempt coming now as Paul Rogers will do the kicking. The kick is good. The final score, Nebraska 10, Kansas State 7. Kansas State mounted a furious attack in the dying moments, but the clock ran out at the Nebraska 15, and Nebraska has won their fifth game in a row. Bob Devaney's Cornhuskers had never beaten Oklahoma at Norman. The year before, Oklahoma had humbled Nebraska before a national television audience. Nebraska had to win to share the conference championship with Missouri. All the ingredients were present for a tremendous contest, and it was just that. Things looked gloomy early for NU. On the first Oklahoma play from scrimmage, Jack Mildren rambles in for a touchdown, literally untouched. Down 7 to nothing to start the ball game. The Nebraska spirit then took over. Here, Jeff Kinney goes straight up the middle and gains 10 yards. 
Quarterback Van Bronson now looking to get into the running act. First trying to find a man to throw to. Whoops, detour. He starts back the other way. Well, a change of mind now. We'll try the other side for a while. Looking for help is Van Bronson. Well, let's go back to the middle of the field. Too many red shirts. Bronson is stopped after a gain of 30 yards. It kept the Nebraska drive growing. Bronson to Kinney, a gain of six. Now Kinney, behind a fine block by Mike Green, advances the ball to the Oklahoma one. From that point on, Bronson will sneak for the touchdown. Nebraska has come back after a very disheartening start. Here's the kick by Rogers. It's good. The ball game tied 7-7. Nebraska got the ball back in a hurry. Mildred back to pass. And Larson intercepts. The senior from Sioux City gets several good blocks downfield. Returns it 23 yards to the Oklahoma 27. Five plays later, Kinney goes three yards over left guard to score. The kick is good by Rogers. Nebraska takes the lead 14 to 7. The defensive secondary gets back into the play. Here, Stevenson intercepts the Mildred pass at the Oklahoma 39 as the quarter ends. After five running plays netted only 30 yards, Rodgers now kicks a 26-yard field goal, and at the half, Nebraska leads Oklahoma 17-7. to But the Huskers were just warming up in that first half. In the second half now, here a fine defensive play by Ken Geddes and Bob Liggett forced Mildred out of bounds. Oklahoma can't move the ball against the Big A's leading defense and are forced to punt. On the attack now, with the ball, Bronson throws to Frost, moves to the outside, and has a gain of 18 yards. At the Oklahoma 11, Kinney finds a huge hole and scores again. The point after was no good. Nebraska 23, Oklahoma the defense refused to let OU move the football. Here's Abel fumbles and loses 10 yards. With the ball now at the Nebraska 46, Brownson will turn in another super run. Not quite as much scrambling this time as Brownson decides to head upfield, figuring the shortest distance between two points is probably a straight line. The Huskers are rolling again. Now Kinney will throw a halfback pass, a fine catch made by Guy Engels. It capped off a drive of 54 yards in six plays. The kick was good. Nebraska has a whopping lead, 30-7. to seven. The floodgates were open. Here Heisman Trophy winner Steve Owens fumbles and Al Larson recovers. Nebraska's on the move again. In four plays, Nebraska scores on this pass from Brownson, the sophomore of the year, Jeff Kinney. The kick was good. Nebraska leads 37-7. It was a long day for Jack Mildren. Here he's thrown for a seven-yard loss by Mike Wynn. Oklahoma was able to score to make it 37-14 as the Sooner Schooner got a chance to make another appearance on the field. Now Jerry Taggy at the controls for Nebraska. Passes to Larry Frost. Good block. Cross gains 30. Now Taggy will hit his fourth straight pass. He drops back from scrimmage and throws to Hughes. And Hughes turns it off. A gain of 22. On the next play, Hughes dashes for six yards. The final touchdown of the day. The kick is good. The final score, Nebraska 44, Oklahoma 14. 
The Nebraska team had shared the conference championship with Missouri. They were on their way to the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas, to play the Georgia Bulldogs. A season that was supposed to be only average at best had become a typical Bob Devaney season, winning eight games and losing only two. In Devaney's years at Nebraska, he has never experienced a losing season. The nation's winningest coach continued to win. And with the closing of the season, Nebraska fans continued to think and talk football and look forward to the 1970 season. The spirit and determination of a senior-dominated club had proven Coach Devaney's often-told philosophy that be it in life or a game of football, you can never give up. That you must continue to fight and try harder. And with that philosophy, a many times hopeless situation, one of elation and victory. That was Nebraska football in 1969.